Hello, brothers and sisters. You know, every now and then we get a little glimpse into uh, what daily life must have been like for the apostles. Just like every now and then we get a little glimpse into heaven when, when Mary's speaking and her Marian apparitions. Well, today I was reading something from 2 Timothy chapter 4 that really brings out the humanity of St. Paul. And it's really encouraging because we know full well our own humanity. And when we look at the lives of great heroes and apostles and saints, we sometimes think like, well, they must have been super people. And uh, they were super people, but they were totally human. And they became super people by their total reliance on the Lord and total obedience to him. And we can experience the same transformation. But it's encouraging to know the, uh, the humanity of these people. So here's 2 Timothy chapter 4 starting with verse nine. So Paul's saying, do your best, he's speaking to Timothy, do your best to come to me soon. So Paul needs people. Paul needs people to help him in his ministry, but Paul also needs people to support him personally. Do your best to come to me soon. Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. So Paul is abandoned by somebody who is counting on. Crescens has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmatia. These two didn't abandon Paul, but they, they've gone on to other missions. And sometimes that happens with us too. Sometimes we're put together with other people for a while, and then the Lord takes them away, and they, they're no longer there to support us or work with us or be a personal support. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful in serving with me. So this is interesting, too, because Mark is probably John Mark, who's spoken about in the Acts of the Apostles, and an argument over John Mark was what split up Barnabas and Paul. Paul didn't want Mark to be with them anymore because he left them in the middle of a mission. Barnabas said, oh, come on, give the young man another chance. He's really a good guy. So Mark went off with Barnabas. But here's Paul saying, oh, come on, uh, have Mark come and be with me. So there must have been a reconciliation. Uh, time must have healed some wounds. And, you know, what really caused a very serious split up between Paul and Barnabas now has been reconciled. And Paul is willing to have Mark serve with him again. This is also Mark, who's probably the author of the Gospel of Mark. Tychius, I have sent to Ephesus. When you come... Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. So this is really interesting. It's wintertime. Paul's in prison, and he wants his cloak because it's going to get cold very soon, and he, he, he wants to be warm. He, he, he wants his cloak. He left his winter clothing, and he's asking Timothy to bring his winter clothing and also his books, probably uh, uh papyrus rolls of, of the scriptures and some writing paper to write on. Then he goes on to say, Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. And this is kind of like the, the biblical principle where it says, leave vengeance to the Lord. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. So there's a need to just kind of keep turning things over to the Lord, betrayals, disappointments, uh, people speaking against us, people abandoning us, people betraying us. Uh, we need to keep turning it over to the Lord. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but it's something that we're not in a position or authorized to get even or take vengeance. We need to keep releasing that to the Lord, the forgiveness. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. I've often thought how frustrating it was for Paul. He'd come into a town, he'd preach the gospel, people would respond, and then people would follow him around, contradicting him and confusing the new converts, causing some of them to turn away. How, how frustrating is that? People dedicated to tearing you down, tearing your work down. Not a lot of us have people doing that to us, but we have some people sometimes doing that to us. We need to release them, to the mercy and justice of God. At my first defense, this is his first hearing in Rome before the Roman courts, no one took my part. 
everyone deserted me. So here, Paul's saying, you know, it's pretty disappointing. The first time I appeared before the judges in Rome for a preliminary hearing, nobody was there to support me. Nobody was there to defend me. May it not be charged against them. So here again, we have real hurt, real disappointment, real wounds. And, the, and then Paul saying, forgive them, Lord, forgive them. You know, the mercy, the merciful heart of Paul towards those who opposed them. And, and he really suffered from this greatly. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength to proclaim the word fully that all the Gentiles might hear it. So even when all human support is gone, even when we've been betrayed by friends, even when out of negligence or insensitivity or forgetfulness, people don't stand by us, even by lack of understanding of the situation we're in, there's no support. We can count on the support of the Lord. The Lord will never leave us. He's promised us that. I will be with you till the end of the ages. Uh, Jesus in John's gospel talks about how the Father is always with me. And Jesus is praying that we have the same experience of the Father's love, the, so, the same confidence in the Father's love, protection, care, providential care over our life that Jesus himself had. Now, the next sentence is worth paying attention to. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Now, Paul's a Roman uh, citizen. He wouldn't be thrown to the lions in Rome. They didn't do that to Roman citizens, but he's talking metaphorically. The Lord rescued me from people who wanted to do me in. The Lord rescued me from, quote, natural disasters. The Lord rescued me from uh, dying, from being lashed, being whipped, being stoned. And the Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, one thing I wonder about often is that the apostles, uh, various other spiritual writers say the Lord will always protect us and care for us. But at a certain point, every single apostle, every single saint died. And sometimes they died from... Uh, Things like Paul died from, being beheaded. He wasn't acquitted in the Roman court. He wasn't uh, set free again. He was going to die probably by having his head cut off uh, in, a, in a place in Rome that still commemorates that today. So how do, we, how do we kind of reconcile Paul's confidence in the Lord protecting him and taking care of him and saving him from the lion's mouth, rescuing him from every evil, and saving him for the heavenly kingdom. Well, earlier in the chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, Paul says, I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So Paul, when he wrote the rest of that chapter, already knew he was about to die, already knew that he, he was about to complete his, his mission from the Lord and that he was going to depart. His, his life was already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. Paul knew that he was about to die. So when he talks later on in verse 13, the Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom, He's looking at the providential moment and manner of his death as part of the Lord's protection. So we can count on that too. The Lord will guard us and protect us and still guard us and protect us when the time for us to finish our mission has arrived and the time for us to die and be with the Lord forever has come. And, the Lord, and Paul says here, the Lord's going to give a reward for everybody who perseveres to the end. The Lord's going to give a reward for everybody who's faithful. The Lord's going to give a reward for everybody who bears the suffering of life and forgives and, and, and keeps on trusting and keeps on believing and keeps on hoping and keeps on loving, keeps on joining our suffering to the suffering of Christ. The Lord's going to give a great reward. And so we can double down with Paul and say, to him be the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. The humanity of Paul is showing here his, his disappointment, his, his dealing with the weather, with the impending cold, his need for a cloak, uh, the books he needs or he wants, uh, the companionship he needs, and, and just most of all, the Lord strengthened him. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength. And the Lord will stand by us today and every day of our life and give us strength until in his love, in his wisdom, in his providence, the time has come to depart. Praise the name of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.